Mark, we have talked extensively on our broadcast about the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. Uh, recently, we saw uh, Congresswoman uh, Rashida Tlaib uh, supporting, uh, again, uh, the idea to uh, take away the tax-exempt status of pro-Israel organizations. This would, instead of boycott, divestment, and sanctions group, which are in violation of U.S. law and, and could have their tax-exempt status revoked, but this idea of, of utilizing the law, utilizing courts or legislation, uh, we call it lawfare, and we have been representing inside the United States. I think that's just important to continue to reiterate to people. There's not like at the UN or some international organiz- uh, or other international organization. But, Mark, right here in our own U.S. courts, there are actors that are bringing these lawsuits against pro-Israel organizations. We represent one of those organizations in a case that we recently just had a, another victory in the case. Tell people about it. Sure. Thanks, Jordan. Good to be here. And uh, in fact, until yesterday, we represent clients in three different cases in federal court in D.C. on the same issue, Al-Tamimi versus Adelson, Pellet versus Netanyahu, and until yesterday, uh, the Dawabisha family versus Netanyahu. Yesterday, we had another big win in that lawsuit. Just to give you a little bit of background, back in February of 2020, this group of activists in D.C. filed a massive lawsuit against Prime Minister, then Prime Minister Netanyahu, former President Donald Trump, and several other prominent pro-Israel politicians and public figures, including our client, who was the former Democratic New York State Assemblyman, Dove Hyken. It was an absolutely bizarre complaint and alleged a massive conspiracy between the Israeli government and all the defendants to commit war crimes. No evidence whatsoever. But interestingly enough, they actually made one of the same claims that you were just discussing that Rashida Tlaib made. They claimed that giving to Israeli charities violated the financing terrorism statutes. And they threw in some anti-Semitic blood libels for good measure about Palestinian kids being used for target practice. Really bizarre, far out stuff. Nary a footnote or reference of any kind, just absolutely baseless drivel. Now, the case was slowed for a bit because their lawyer, you can't make this stuff up, was actually suspended from the practice of law for unethical behavior. It's the same, was the same lawyer in all three cases. Sure. Um, but basically, the court eventually, uh, we filed a motion to dismiss back in, in August of 2020. And on March 3rd, 2021, the court granted our motion. But the plaintiffs were allowed the chance to refile an amended complaint, and they tried again. And yesterday, the court finally dismissed the entire case. We also had another hearing yesterday. Myself and, uh, and Ben Sisney, senior counsel of ACLJ, were on this one yesterday. We had a hearing in court for Pellet versus Netanyahu, another one of our cases where the, the new lawyer was begging to please be let out of the case because he was, I mean, he didn't say this, but potentially just embarrassed to be on it because of how bizarre the claims were. He had he said he hadn't actually even read it. His name was just on the lawsuit. But uh, the judge said, well, you filed it. you got to stay in here until the end. So, so just a bizarre set of cases trying to uh, to further the, you know, the, the false BDS claims. Yeah, I mean, there were the claims in here uh, against the person we represented that uh, somehow, by being you know, a supporter of Israel and having a group, you know, Americans against anti-Semitism, he, he was a he was a Israeli agent, so he's some kind of foreign agent. Uh, but but, uh, Mark, while we win these cases and they can sound absurd, like you go through the, the allegations that are made without any any kind of reference, no footnoting, no no documentation to prove any of these allegations, uh, we have to fight these out in court, and we re- we are able to do that at no cost to these clients. But that's the idea is that they can, even if these go nowhere, they can drain people of resources, then thus making them afraid to step out and take the pro-Israel position. Exactly. The complaint that they filed, Jordan, was 175 pages long. I mean, I yeah. I shudder to think of what the hourly rates would be for a regular law firm uh, being asked to defend a client in that thing. But, you know, we were able to do that thanks to the generosity of our base and we were able to uh, to, to help this nonprofit that was being sued for for free. Yeah, I wanted to say something here. You know, this BDS fight, so people understand, has been going on for years. I mean, we've been involved in this uh, for over 10 years now. And of course, we did that participate. I spoke at the UN General Assembly Hall. Um, Mark participated in that. So did you, Jordan. I mean, this was this has been an ongoing effort for us. And these cases, I mean, what Mark just said, by the way, in the in the case he's referring to with these, you know, 100 plus page complaints that are filed. I mean, Mark, I, I can't remember if it was Al-Tamimi or the other one, where basically they were relitigating the entire Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Yeah, that was Al-Tamimi. Let me, let me go to Than, because Than, uh, in, in Washington, we talked about Congresswoman Tlaib, but she's put forward to uh, the Treasury Secretary uh, to, to 
actually go after and revoke the tax exempt status. Now we responded uh, 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 very clearly to that about why not only she was wrong and whoever put that together for her and her staff was wrong, but that, that uh, again, the opposite is actually true. These groups that support the boycott divestment sanctions movement, which has uh, there's wide bipartisan uh, support against those organizations that they're in violation of U S law. And thus they could be, uh, subject to having their taxes of status revoked if they have that. And these issues are connected, Jordan. I mean, when this is one of the, the points that we make frequently on this broadcast. One of the reasons that these outlandish lawsuits are brought, I mean, you heard, you heard Mark go through it, and you might think, why would someone bring a lawsuit like this? Uh, Jordan, one of the biggest reasons that these lawsuits are brought is to give support to both the domestic in the United States and the international efforts uh, to uh, to pressure Israel. I mean, d- domestically, you're right. Congressman Tlaib is now pressuring uh, the IRS, the Department of Treasury, to use support of Israel as a basis by which to either deny or remove tax exempt status. Of course, there's no rooting in law, but you can point to a lawsuit like this as growing momentum that maybe something like this is legitimate. And then internationally, Jordan, we talk about this a lot, but when you go up to the United Nations and when we go up as, as an accredited uh, NGO to the United Nations, you see more censures against the nation of Israel than all the other nations of the world. So I think if you ask the typical person, you know, what kind of countries are the Human Rights Council or the General Assembly targeting, you would think of, of countries like North Korea or China or Iran or Venezuela or China. But no, Jordan, you can add all of those up and all of the other countries of the world, and they still don't come close to uh, representing or equaling the number of censures brought against against the nation of Israel. So it's a comprehensive effort. And these lawsuits that we litigate, one of the reasons we engage them is to support those efforts, both domestically and internationally, to make sure that the momentum doesn't get carried away. You know, one of the things on that front, of course, just to jump in here for a second, Jordan, is that in look, what Sam mentioned about the Tlaib going after the IRS or, or having the IRS go after pro-Israel organizations, we responded. We took, you know, we took action. We responded to the chief counsel of the IRS and the, and the secretary of the treasury. So we're not letting these things go. We are responding aggressively. 